All right, this is the uh, part two guide to the How to Shadow Priest. I know it's been about a year, but um, I think it's time to make one for things that happened after 3.3. So first off, I'm going to start off with a few talents and glyphs. Um, Imp Spirit Tap here is uh, crits, increase your total spirit by 10%, and uh, Twisted Faith which is increase your spell power by 20% of your total spirit. And a glyph of shadow, which uh, increases your spell power by 30% of your spirit. And um, Twisted Faith and Glyph of Shadow both uh, increase spell damage based on spirit, and if Spirit Tap increases spirit, so Spirit Tap will boost your spell damage um, mana regen on spirit tap procs will keep you DPS any longer without having to use dispersion or mana pots during fights. So not having to disperse to get more mana, which is six seconds of downtime, spirit tap helps you do more damage that way as well. Now I wouldn't say to gear pure spirit at the expense of haste and crit, but I would advise to not ignore it. Sometimes an upgrade that looks like spell power boost turns out to be a loss because of the huge loss of spirit. On the subject of uh, mana regen, the Shadow Fiend is a very powerful mana return ability. It is also considered a DPS tool, a fourth dot that can be used every three minutes if you have a uh, Veiled Shadows spec'd. So, um, as far as other glyphs, you have a uh, glyph of Mind Flay, increasing Mind Flay damage when you have Shadow Word Pain on the target, and the Twisted Faith as well increases uh, Mind Flay and Mind Blast if you have Shadow Word Pain on the target. So those are uh, two necessary glyphs, the Glyph of Shadow and Mind Flay. Um, I'm still running with Shadow Word Pain. It's uh, just a simple restore mana um, glyph. There are other ones. Um, not really any that is a full-time DPS ability. You have uh, a Mind Seer one, which increases the the radius of uh, you know the, the AE. But most of the time, when you're dealing with AE packs, you got the tank gather them all into a small group, so that's not really beneficial. And then you have a uh, Shadow Word Death Glyph, which increases damage when the mob's below 35 percent, which you know, it's got a 12 second cooldown, and yeah, it's going to increase a little bit of damage, but you're not going to be able to use it till you know, the boss is down to 35. And, um, you know, the more damage it does, the more damage it's going to do to you, but there's, you know, talents for reducing that damage. And so, as far as another DPS glyph, there isn't really a set one. The Shadow Word Pain, you know, keeps mana going, keeps you DPS and longer, and I've just stuck with it. Um, for miners, this is just shadow protection, levitate, you know, simple things, you know, screw with regions, make things last longer. But a good one to have is this glyph of shadow fiend. So if it dies, you still get something back. Um, so that's, that's as far as I'm going with, with glyphs. Um, another uh, talent that is, uh, to consider, but one that's often argued over is inner focus. Now, uh, throw out the mana reduction part of the spell and focus on the 25% crit. The argument is that for one talent point, the one spell crit isn't worth it, which I would say is correct if you're using it with Mind Blast or Shadow or Death. Mind Flay is a channel spell, and uh, the inner focus lasts the entire duration. So all three ticks will have a 25% increased crit chance. Now, let's take this a little bit further. Dots. All three will benefit, but there's a catch. Shadow Word Pain, the crit will only last until Mind Flay refreshes it. Mind Flay being cast often makes this kind of worthless. Devouring Plague will last the whole dot unless you are specced in Devouring Plague, which you should. Then it only applies to the initial hit, which makes it fairly useless as well. Vampiric Touch, on the other hand, will last the entire spell, which is 5 ticks. 
so using it with VT is more powerful than MindFlay. Take it one step further, and my favorite application would be MindSeer. Like MindFlay, a channeled spell, but an AE with five ticks. So this is where it shines, a 25% crit on all ticks to all those mobs. I've never seen so many crits at once. Combine that with some haste cooldowns, and you get yourself some instant aggro. Um, for gear, um, get yourself the uh, four set tier 10 bonus as quickly as possible. Now, the wording on it may be a little confusing to some, but basically it turns Mind Flay from a three second spell to a two and a half second spell and redistributes the ticks evenly. Um, Right after 3.3 went in and Vampiric Touch and Devour and Plague benefit from haste, the haste cap went to like 800. And um, my previous video you know, was saying 330. Uh, well, 330 is what you need to get two flays in between blasts. Um, now it seems 800 is no longer the cap, and now it's considered uh, 1200 to 1400. And I'm guessing that's because of heroic gear values and from the Ice Crown stuff. So, you know, the 800 before was because up to the 800 mark, haste was considered equal to spell power point for point. And after 800, the benefit wasn't as great. Now you keep stacking haste, that just makes your dots faster, all your casts faster. So, you know, there really isn't much of a, a limit. It's the real only limit is, is what you're going to be able to attain on your gear. So 1200 to 1400 is, is pretty damn good. Um, with the force set and high haste, Mind Flay is incredibly powerful. So powerful that Mind Blast is being dropped out of the rotation and only used to reflect, refresh replenishment. So if Mind Blast isn't being used on cooldown, then specking in Mind Blast is a waste. So many are uh, dropping points out of Imp Mind Blast and putting them in like imp ve just for more survivability but that leaves a few more points left over to spend on whatever you know, maybe put them into a spell you wouldn't mind having like a, a silence or you know the psychic horror you know these extra interrupts that could you know save the day um i don't really think there's a good point to put them in shadow affinity unless you have some serious problems with threat but that may be possible if you're spec'd in VE, so spend the extra points how you like. Um, you know, any of this can change, though. I have seen, you know, that a lot of it seems to have remained intact with the Ruby Sanctum patch, but I've seen a lot of info about haste being adjusted because cast times are so fast that, you know, melee classes and other classes that have interrupts, they can't interrupt them for, you know, PvP purposes. Um, socket bonuses. Uh, with gems, there are really only three we have to choose from. For the red, we have uh, the 23 spell power runed cut. Uh, for yellow, we have the spell power and haste orange. And for the blue socket, we have the spell power spirit purple. Um, when gemming, only go for the socket bonuses if it's at least seven haste or spell power. And only have two purple gems in your gear to activate the meta gem. Uh, our meta gem is the chaotic sky flare diamond, which is plus crit and crit damage, which uh, needs to be activated. You know, cause it's it's badass. Um, but try to place your blue gems in blue sockets for the potential bonuses. Um, now, pure spell power gems are still the most powerful, so most of your gear will have them. You know, for instance, here I'm not going after the blue socket bonus. 